Hello everyone and welcome to round 10 of the 2021 Tata Steel Chess Tournament. We have a, a very top tier game between world number 1 and world number 2. Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana. Uh, Caruana has the white pieces and he is currently leading the tournament in a joint lead. And Magnus is trailing uh, by, by a point so he of course would very much enjoy beating uh, Fabiano Caruana. Uh, but uh, Fabi playing with the white pieces uh, that's uh, not, not an easy win definitely for, for anyone in the world. So can Magnus do it or will Fabi even further his lead in the tournament? Let's see what happened in this game. So Fabi uh, with the white pieces opened with d4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have knight to f6 by Magnus, uh, c4 uh, and now e6. We have g3, Fabi opts for the Catalan opening. We have d5 and now knight to f3. We have bishop to b4 check and now bishop to d2. So this is, this is all very standard stuff. Bishop back to d6 and now bishop to g2. Uh, we have c6, nicely strengthening the position in the center. Knight to c3 and now Magnus castles. And here bishop to g5. Uh, black wasted a, a tempo bringing the bishop back to d6. And so white will also waste one getting it from d2 to g5. Uh, we have h6, Magnus pushes the bishop back. And now we have a trade here. Captures, captures. And this is a... Uh, the, the position that Fabi definitely had in his home preparation because this position has been reached in top tier game many, uh, games many times. It's been reached uh, in Ding versus Topalov, Gelfand versus Ding, in Arkia versus Giri, uh, Bachman versus Kramnik and so on. And the, one of the most popular moves here is castles. But here uh, Fabi prepares queen to b3. And queen to b3 is a new move in the position. Uh, so let's see what happens as it, it, it's of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So he's going after the b7 pawn. But uh, more often than not when uh, you play something like this that's never really your, your goal. So here you're also putting additional pressure to the center because now you can see all of these pieces are attacking the center. Bishop is x-raying the d5 square. So very interesting. Okay, for the moment this is defended but it does... Um uh, prevent black from developing freely. So knight to d7 by Magnus and here Fabi castles with queen back to e7 by Magnus uh, and now comes c5 pushing the bishop back. We have bishop to c7 and now e4 striking in the center. We have b6 uh, which is often what you want to do when you have such a weird advancement of the pawn uh, which is often uh, characterized as an, uh, you know, not a very positional idea. You want to challenge those pawns with uh, moves like b6. So b6 and here Fabi trades once on d5. We have e captures on d5, e captures on d5 and rook f to e1. Now attacking Carlsen's queen and now Carlsen needs to figure out what to do with the queen. Obviously you have two choices either queen back to d8 or queen to f6 and here Magnus went queen to f6 which allows Fabi a very very interesting idea. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the rook on a8 is undefended. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on d5. And this comes with an attack on the queen and the bishop here. So you have to capture uh, the knight. We have c captures on d5 and now queen captures on d5 attacking the rook. And you might think, okay, so I just moved the rook and what's the point of this uh, knight sacrifice? The point is after rook to b8, Fabi pushed c6 and now Carlsen's knight is trapped here on d7. So very, very, uh, very nice preparation by Fabi here. And also you have to be careful if somehow this queen moves and this pawn gets uh, to, to d5 while being defended, then that's just a terrible position. So here Fabi, uh, Magnus has no choice other than to give up uh, the knight. The knight has no squares. All of the squares that the knight can go to are covered. The rooks are blocking the knight here and here. And here if you play... Uh, there's there, there's nothing you can play. You have to uh, move the knight. There's there uh, <laughs> or rather you you cannot move the knight. You you have to play something. But there really isn't a good move. You could try knight to c5, maybe to force a white to capture with the pawn. But other than that, you have rook to d8. This is what Magnus played, and now Fabi just grabs that knight on d7. So. Uh, C captures on d7, bishop captures and now knight to e5 by Fabi. This is maybe perhaps one move where Fabi could have uh, 
could have played a, a stronger move, but uh, Fabi ha probably had this analyzed with a with a really really strong engine because I only left the position to be analyzed to the depth of 40, and the rook eight to c1 is the only top move that the engine recommends here, going after that bishop on c7 and just uh, developing the only undeveloped piece, uh, which uh, seems to be still giving Y the advantage but Fabi went knight to e5 right away and here Magnus just uh, uh, plays bishop to e6 the bishop is under attack he first attacks the queen and now he's going to eliminate this knight on e5 we have queen back to e4 and the bishop captures on e5 we have d captures with an attack on the queen here and the queen back to e7 and now we have this uh, end game two rooks and the bishop uh, for each side and Fabi is up a pawn so can he make use of that pawn it's uh, four against three on the king's side so uh, very very hard to take advantage of that if, maybe if it was two against one on the queen side then it'd be uh, somewhat easier but again very hard to do so here queen to e3 Fabi wants to centralize this bishop from this e4 square the bishop will be a monster piece so here we have rook b to c8 getting the rook into the game and the bishop to e4 now by Fabi uh, controlling a lot of squares uh, controlling the c2 square so Magnus doesn't have a very nice rook lift here we have queen to c5 now offering a queen trade and Fabi accepts we have captures captures and now f4 creating a beautiful pawn chain here and with this bishop nicely guarding uh, against uh, sorry uh, this w wasn't captured with the pawn it was captured with the rook uh, and only now we have f4 so the pawn chain is uh, very nicely placed here and black might have some ideas of bringing the rook uh, all the way down to d2 uh, but also uh, you kind of have to worry about f5 so Magnus first needs to deal with that he plays g6 and now king to f2 so now if uh, the rook uh, comes down you, you can easily trade one one pair of rooks so here a5 by Magnus and king to e3 Fabi improves the position of the king uh, we have a4 by Magnus and now rook e to c1 offering a trade of a pair of rooks we have rook to b5 Magnus needs to collect at least one pawn to equalize uh, we have rook to c2 now defending this pawn and now rook to b4 uh, putting uh, putting uh, uh, pressure on this bishop here and this also comes with a trick because here if Fabi isn't careful if he plays something like a3 then Magnus can just uh, play rook captures on e4 captures and bishop checks and then uh, he, he picks up the rook here on c2 so after rook to b4 we have bishop back to d3 Fabi of course avoids such a tactic and now uh, Magnus further uh, grabs space on the king side with h5 we have rook to d2 by Fabi and now b5 we have a3 challenging the rook here and rook to b3 now so Magnus definitely has some pressure here and Fabi needs to be very careful uh, and here Fabi goes rook to c1 he wants to bring the rook over to, to c7 uh, he, he wants to activate his rook a little bit also rook to c3 is an idea just to uh, get rid of uh, one pair of rooks but here Magnus finds a very interesting move and it's the only move that uh, sort of uh, takes away any advantage from Fabi so once again feel free to pause the video and try to find this only move in the position uh, while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting my favorite move in the uh, entire game of chess and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's B4 uh my favorite is usually b4 when white plays it but okay uh, we'll we'll go with uh, this guy here so uh this works because uh well before i show you why it works first i'm going to show you a very interesting line for example rook d captures on d3 if you sacrifice the exchange here to pick up the pawn it looks very interesting you still have the very strong bishop now you have the two to one advantage here so maybe it is possible to do something about it but it's very easy for white to just uh, parry all the all the threats just rook to c7 and now uh, after bishop to c4 cutting off the rook attacking this rook you can go rook to d8 check king g7 and now just rook c to c8 and with these pawns cutting off the king from uh, entering the game it's just not not playable anymore uh, you, you cannot push any pawns or do anything because this is just check check and the other rook will deliver mate on g8 so just wanted to mention that before we go to b4 so this is what magnus played magnus played b4 uh, we have uh, a capture on b4 and now a3 so what was the point of all this b4 a3 idea the point is to take away white's control of the c3 uh, square because without this uh, if you just went for example 
if you just played something, uh, let's say you went bishop to f5, you want to add more attackers to the bishop here, just rook to c3, and the white defends perfectly fine. And he's still up a pawn, so he has a, a, a excellent winning chances here. So instead, this is what Magnus found, and once again, congratulations to everyone who found it, as it's not an easy idea to find. Captures and a3 now finally it takes away the c3 square from white b captures on a3 and only now bishop to f5 and now this move no longer exists so you have to play rook to d1 but now magnus just collects on a3 rook captures on a3 and it uh, doesn't seem uh, like there's much for white to do here white is completely tied down and there are no good moves here uh, fabi played b5 uh, as it's the only pretty much pawn push you could do you you could also try h4 or something like that but now magnus just goes bishop g4 uh, pushes the rook back we have rook to c1 and now magnus uh, secures uh, the <laughs> the draw with bishop to f5 again a triple attack on the bishop here the bishop cannot move because of this uh, check so fabi is forced to repeat rook d1 uh, bishop to g4 rook to c1 bishop to f5 rook c to d1 and it was in this position that uh uh, Fabian Magnus agreed to a draw on move 42 after reaching time control. So very, very, uh, very, very top uh, top level game. And uh, like I said, uh, it was uh, uh, around this point where after this bishop captures on d7 that I could spot pretty much the only instance where Fabi maybe could have played a stronger move. For example, this rook a to c1 instead of allowing Magnus to simplify immediately. Uh, but I guess you don't uh, expect, uh, f uh, you know, for the side that has... Um, uh, that's down upon that simplifying will be will be useful for that side but here it worked out pretty well especially since Magnus found this beautiful uh, idea where he just uh, gave up the pawns like here with the uh, sorry <laughs> I mean I'm in mean the wrong uh, wrong bracket uh, here this B4 uh, idea and after captures and this uh, just freed the C3 square and he was able to secure a very quick draw so yeah, uh, very, very interesting stuff, and uh, it's always uh, a clash when uh, Fabi and Magnus meet, because they're number one and number two in the world, and they played the uh, entire World Chess Championship match, so the entire 10 games of classical chess uh, without a single win, so they drew all 10 games, so uh, again, it's uh, still, still a draw between the two of them. And we'll see, we'll see what happens in the next one. But yeah, usually when they meet, I will always show the game because, I mean, if we don't show a game where number one and number two play, then what are we really doing? Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, Magnus can't be very happy with the result, but uh, then again, uh, maybe he can't be happy with the result in the tournament uh, situation currently. But a draw against Fabi with the black pieces, any any man would be uh, perfectly fine with that. Whereas for Fabi, who is currently leading the tournament, a draw against Magnus is is uh, more than welcome. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, still, the tournament is still young, so to say. So uh, you know, anything can still happen. So once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kyle Ulich, Ricardo Lima, Brandon Kirk, Pano Atpianza, and Peter Harley for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage uh, of the Tata Steel 2021, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. Uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.